Good evening, guys. Happy Monday. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Grecia. How are you? I'm fine. And you? Doing great. <laughs> Mondays are exciting. <laughs> but about yeah. you, Carlos. Carlos and Jorge, how are you guys? Hello, teacher. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Enjoy. <laughs> How was the weekend? Pretty short, teacher. I know, right? In the blink of an eye. <laughs> also, that is an idiom you can use, guys. In the blink of an eye. Look like I just leave their work and right now again to work <laughs> yeah it feels the same what about our oh, carlos antonio is always listening let me check i took a picture on friday i think ah uh -huh, here it is on friday we were pending three groups from the presentation yours was one of the ones that was pending but not everyone is connected yet. So we're going to wait for them, okay? Before we can do that. All right. Um, remember, we do random conversation topics at the beginning of each class. So for tonight, we're going to be talking about social networks, okay? In your own opinion, right? This is like a personal opinion. What are the positive and the negative effects of social media? And by social media, we can go anything from TikTok to Instagram to Facebook. What are the positive sides and what are the negative sides, in your opinion, guys? Uh, the, the positive, I think you can find whatever you want to, to buy, for example, mm -hmm. like marketplace. But in that case, it's not it's not necessary uh, a good way to buy because sometimes the, there are a problem with the platform or with the seller that maybe mm -hmm. the cough. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a scam, right? In marketplace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm not sure that I have been a scam in marketplace, but I have heard people that have gotten scams in the marketplace, right? That's a good opinion for me. It can be positive in some sites, but then it also has some dark sites also. <laughs> All right, let me hear Maria and Christian. Please. What do you think? What are some positives and negatives from social media? Um, I think we have both uh, positive items for the social media is when you need to contact to um, someone that is special for you and is in, a, in another country. For me, it's an easy way to, to, to talk and know about this, this person. And also, if you want to get a lot, uh, a one, a one. If you if you want to get uh, a product, uh, it's an easy way to 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 get online shops. Mm -hmm. And a negative, um, maybe when the kids are in the social medias, uh, the um the contenido i don't know the content name. the content it's not good for the kids i think it's not uh, safe because, mm -hmm. yes it's not safe because you find everything in in all the social media also the the kids now likes to show the tiktok and for me it's not good for that mm -hmm. and for me, this is the, the negative thing. I agree with you. I agree with you also, Christia. Let's okay. hear it, Maria Seron. What do you think about this, Maria? What are some good sides and good bad sides and some bad sides about social media? Maria. 
Are you there, Marian? I está en mute, Maria. You're in mute. Mm. Can you hear me, Maria? Well, probably she's not. She's connected, but she's not there. <laughs> Maybe she's grabbing some dinner. Okay, so we're gonna go with the next question, guys, okay? So the second question, it's related to fake news, all right? What do you know about fake news? Have you ever heard some fake news? Like on the news, or like say, for example, um, Britney Spears is coming to El Salvador. That's fake news because it's not true, right? <laughs> Have you heard any fake news recently? Definitely, Chef. Uh, maybe with the Ministerio de Educación. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, the scandal from this morning. <laughs> sometimes they, other people mm -hmm. make a, a advice about no class tomorrow, but it's a fake news. It's true, <laughs> and they publish. Well, the child can be happy one day, maybe. <laughs> it's true, yeah, that's, that's a good example of fake news. What about, what about you, Cristia? Have you heard any fake news recently? Um, no. Sorry. No, no worries. Um, let's hear Nelson. Have you heard any fake news recently, Nelson? Nelson, can you hear me? Hello. Hi, Nelson. We have a question right now. Have you heard any fake news recently? ¿Se ha escuchado alguna noticia falsa en la tele, Nelson? Have you heard any fake news on TV? Lately? Um, no. No. <laughs> no. All right. All right. Thank you, Nelson. Let's hear Maria. Maria Ceron. Are you back, Maria? Está por ahí. Otherwise, we're going with Norma Carolina. Okay, Maria, no worries. Um, Norma, the question is if you have heard any fake news recently on TV or on social media, on the internet. Any fake news? Yes, frequently uh, death of actors or actresses. Mm -hmm. uh, usually. Yeah, it's true. I heard one that they said Guns N' Roses was coming to the Salvador. Totally fake. <laughs> yes, that kind of fake news, exactly. Do you think fake news are, do, what did, what is the purpose? of fake news. Do you think there is a purpose for them to exist? Um, more, more people uh, uh, addicted to uh, are your page. Mm, okay. More, yes. more likes too. More likes, yeah, followers, yeah. To create trends, right? Generar tendencia, to create trends. That's, that's true, Norma, thank you. All right, so now that we have more people connected, we're gonna start. <laughs> Um, remember, there were three groups that were pending from last week to do the presentation on Friday. Um, let me tell you guys, it's gonna be, I have it here. I have room number three. We had Claudia Melendez, Jose Rodrigo, and Maria Concepcion. But I think Maria Concepcion, so no, Maria is not gonna be able to connect. So we're gonna go with Claudia Melendez and Jose Rodrigo. Are they here? No, they are not here yet. Let's see, Jorge, Linda, and Olga Marleni. You, you are the only one from your group, Jorge, connected right now. <laughs> what, what is the, the exercise, teacher? Remember the one that you did on Friday? You did a presentation uh, with your group? I, I was like a listener. Oh, it's I'm true. Driving yeah, from it's true. Miguel to San Salvador. So it's Linda and all of and they are not here. I, I can practice some. 
Oh yeah, we will have a lot of practice today, but this one was in, in group because they had a presentation prepared. Let's see, oh. we have Ana Raquel. No, she's not here. And Nelson, no. Okay, Mario and Wendy, neither of them. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We have a small review, all right? If you remember, we lost two classes um, from the previous, not the last week, from the previous one because of September 15th to 16th. So ideally, today and tomorrow, we are finishing unit number two, right? Tomorrow we will have the midterm exam. For the ones that haven't finished it, you have until tomorrow. And tonight, it's mostly practice about reporting speech. But before, before just practicing, I wanted to review right? like a summary, a condensed version of all the different scenarios we have seen. We have seen reported the speech, affirmative, negative, yes or no questions, and information questions, right? If you remember, each scenario has different rules and they have different things that you can use to, re to convert to report the speech. So right now we're going to review that in a condensed version, right? A very summarized version. We're not gonna go through all and every single rule, but we're gonna see some of them, okay? So let me check. All right, we have this one in here. I need one person to help me read this part. You will have to read what is in the picture. You have to read the picture and then you hear, you read this, okay? Then that would be person number one. I need another person to read this picture and then read these paragraphs, right? All right, Jorge, help me with number one, section number one, and then Cristia, help me reading section number two, please. You say uh, I have to read this to picture, uh huh, and then this to one. What to, to 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 say what I see in the picture? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, first, to go to to read, I can find the words, so I'll invent new ones. In that picture, I see. One one person maybe like Miguel de Cervantes could be <laughs> <laughs> yeah something like that. <laughs> I know it, of, it's supposed to be maybe, Shakespeare. It's uh, here here. It's supposed to be Shakespeare. Supposed. <laughs> uh, but I I can see there small letters. Yeah, I can barely see them either. <laughs> so don't worry about that. Can you help me reading this or here, please? Okay, what did he say? He said he couldn't fi find the words, so he, he wouldn't, so he would invent new ones. The law is not very difficult to understand. I said the law was not very difficult to understand. All right, very good. In both the scenarios, if you pay attention closely, Jorge was using report the speech, right? Um, look at the picture again. It says, I can't find the words. So I will invent new ones. When Jorge translated it to report the speech, Jorge said, he said he couldn't, the past tense of can't, he couldn't find the words. So the past tense of will, would. So he would invent new ones, right? So. Jorge is showing us the very basic examples of reported speech in those sentences. Thank you, Jorge. Please, yeah, please. Okay. In the picture, then he said, I'll be home in five minutes. Then she said, I'll be ready in five minutes. And, and then, in English, we have two ways of repeating what another person said. When you report people's words, you can give exact words. This is called direct speech. You can also report someone's ideas or words as part of your sentence. This is reported speech. Okay, thank you, Christia. So remember guys, you have two ways to do it. If you repeat exactly what the person said, all right, that's called direct, right? 
but then reported the speech. It's when we add some small words and some prepositions or words that's gonna help us report it, tell the story, right? So what we're going to see here is the switch of the bar of the scent of the tenses. Okay. So I need one person to help me read this part, please. One reader, please. One question about yeah? the uh, in the picture uh, in the in the in the advice uh, mm -hmm. they, they say in 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 that one. In the first one. No, in the second one. Okay. Uh, they say the reported speech is some ideas. You don't need to translate uh, exactly that that they say when you are reporting. No, it doesn't say some. It says someone's. Someone's. Uh huh. Someone's ideas. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily all the that that the person says. No, yeah. You have to report everything they say, but not you're not gonna say it exactly as they said it. Okay, okay. you're going Just to mm -hmm. yes. What we do when what we do when we idea. exactly what we do when we report is that we relay the message, right? Relay like, the message like a traductor. Exactly, a right? Fulanita tells this. I'm not going to repeat it. That would be the red. What I'm going to do is to relay the message, pasar el mensaje. And to do that, I'm going to use reported speech. Do I need to follow every single word as Jorge mentioned? Not necessarily, but there are some ways in which we can switch some points and do give the same idea, right? When we report it, okay? okay. So there, but there are some steps that we need to take when we're gonna do reported speech, all right? Just this is again, this is the like the final review we're gonna do for reported speech for this week. Um, Tatiana, please help me read this portion. Tatiana, are you there? Sorry, teacher. Uh, <laughs> I have to read this part. This part. Yes. Uh, when you report, it is necessary to pay attention to some aspects. The sentence change. Number two, the person talking. Number three, the place and time expressions. And number four, in the case of the question, the order, the order or the sentence. Very good. Thank you, Tatiana. So guys, these four points, I recommend that you write them down. I suggest you to write them down because this is what you have to remember. This is what you take into account when you are going to report something, okay? So, and here we're gonna check the different tenses, right? Ideally, what you say here, direct speech, is like the original sentence, let's say. So, for example, if a person gives me a sentence in present, in present simple, when I report it, I will change it to past simple, okay? And we have the example here. She does laundry on Saturday. When I report it, I pass it to past. She said she did her laundry on Saturday. Okay, now remember, with present simple, it's not always necessary to change it to past. It's the only tense that gives you the option. You can change it into past, or you can do, she said she does her laundry on Saturday. That's the only exception with the present tense, right? So what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna do one, and we're gonna be doing one for each tense, okay? So everybody, I need you to write one sentence in simple present, one affirmative sentence in simple present, okay? It can be any subject, any person, any verb. Just make sure you write a sentence in affirmative in simple present. I'm gonna give you two minutes and the ones that finish the sentence, raise your hand so we can start with you guys.
Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Welcome back from your long weekend, Manuel. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, what is the... Right now we're reviewing the final review for reported speech, Manuel. We're, what we have to do right now, only write one sentence in simple present affirmative in your notebook. How, how many? It, just one sentence in simple present. Okay. You don't write it reported, no, just a normal simple present. Okay. The ones that have it finished already, please raise your hand and we can start practicing. Okay. Okay. Let's check. Who else has finished already? Okay. Christia, please read your sentence in present to Jorge. Jorge, please change her sentence to pass. Or you decide if you leave just the reported part in past and then the verb in person. You decide. Christia, please read. I love to read comics. Uh, she said she loves to read comics. Very good. So Jorge opted to only change the verb, the reported verb to leave it in past and then the normal the action verb he left it in present because it's what we were talking about right in the only exception we, when we can do this is if the original sentence is in present right for all the other ones it's not optional it's mandatory to change the tense okay um thank you thank you christian Jorge, please read your sentence in present. And Manuel, please change Jorge's sentence to report the speech. Okay? Okay. Okay. One easy. My dog is black. That's easy. <laughs> Can you repeat the, 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 the sentence? My, Jorge. my dog is black. Ah, okay, okay. Jorge told me. Oh, Jorge said, mm -hmm. uh, her, his dog is black. Correct. Jorge said his dog is black. What is the other option you have to, to say the same sentence? Uh, right. Jorge said uh, his dog was. Yes, one. that is correct. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, very good, guys. All right. Now we're going with the next one. We're going with present continuous to past continuous. Okay. Right. And we have the example in here. Okay. A spike is sleeping in the couch. She said a spike was sleeping in the couch. Right. So let's write. Let's write down one sentence in present continuous in your notebooks. You have two minutes. Write down one sentence in present continuous. Everyone, please, everybody. You have two minutes at 8.26, we can check. All right, we're gonna hear Claudia Melendez. Claudia, please read your sentence in person continuous. Christia, please change it to report a speech. Okay. My husband is walking to the park. Claudia said, I can, I can say Claudia, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Claudia said his husband is working in a bank. I, I, I don't know. Uh, he's <laughs> walking hear. to the park. 
Walking. Uh -huh. Are you walking? walking. <laughs> okay. Do it again, please, Christy. Uh, she said that mm -hmm. he is uh, her husband mm -hmm. is walking. No, was walking mm -hmm. in to the park. Uh, in a, in a in a park. To the park. <laughs> to the park. Yes. Basically, the only thing you're gonna change in this one is the verb to be, right? Because it's from present continuous, you change it to past continuous. The only thing you will change is the verb to be, right? My husband is walking to the park. She said her husband is walk was walking to the park, right? Only the verb to be. Thank you, Claudia. Please, yeah, please read your sentence in present progressive to Manuel Antonio. Manuel, please do it in reported speech. I am working in the report. Okay. Christian said he was working in report. Very good. Thank you, Manuel. Thank you, Christian. Manuel, please read your sentence in present progressive and Wendy, please change it to reported speech. Okay. Okay. Uh, Robert is painting his house. Sorry, Robert. See, sí, Robert is pa painting. Robert is painting his house. In house. A your name. Sorry. Manuel. Don't <laughs> see. Manuel. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, he, he said. Uh -huh. con he, he said. said. Uh -huh. He said. 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 Mm -hmm. well, no, no, no. Ok, no worries Wendy, no se preocupe, lo vamos a hacer en pantalla mm -hmm. acá, ok, lo vamos, a veces es más fácil cuando lo anotamos acá. All right, okay. um, Wendy, repeat the sentence that Manuel gave you in, in present progressive, please. Ok, Robert is painting his house. His house. Mm -hmm. Entonces es Robert, no. Manuel, es que me confundo porque está el otro. <risa> no, pues. He said, he said, okay. uh -huh. he said Robert was uh -huh. in his house. Robert was what, Wendy? Pain. Está en progresivo el verbo. Painting. Uh -huh. Painting his house. Correct. Like that, Wendy. Exactamente lo que va a cambiar. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes. Ok, recapitulando. Si está en present progressive, yo la voy a cambiar a present progressive. Meaning que el verbo to be es lo único que yo voy a cambiar. Yes. Si en vez de is, va a cambiar a was. was. Ok. Si fuera en plural, are, que sería where. De ahí el otro siempre se mantiene en ing porque es progresivo. Ok. That would be the only thing. Very good, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you, Manuel. Okay, the next one. Let me share the screen again. Okay, and now we're gonna go with the other version. We're going, if the original sentence is in present perfect, you're going to change it to past perfect. What is the difference between present perfect and past perfect? The auxiliary. In present perfect, have or has. In past perfect, only has. Y el verbo que le sigue, siempre en participio. Forever and ever participle. Okay, perfect tenses will always use participles. Okay, so we have here David has seen, meaning has yes. seen and participle. David has yes. seen a psychiatrist since 1990. Lo voy a cambiar 
a la versión pasada, que sería past perfect. Lo único que cambio es el auxiliar lo paso a She said David had seen a psychiatrist since 1990. Okay, so let's all write down a sentence in present perfect, please. Write down a present perfect sentence. For example, I have worked in this company for five years. She has she has eaten salad the whole month. We have learned this topic for one week. Okay? Present perfect. Write down one sentence in present perfect. You have two minutes. The ones that already have the sentence in present perfect, raise your hand so we can begin with you guys. Let me check. Tatiana, have you finished your sentence in present perfect? Yes, it Thank you, Tatiana. You're going to read your sentence in present perfect to Jorge Humberto, please. And he's going to change it to past perfect in reported speech. Uh, I have been working late this week. Mm -hmm. I have been working. It's present perfect regressive. El siguiente. <laughs> eh. Present perfect sería I have worked. Okay, I have I have worked. Mm -hmm. Es que me guié con con la con esto. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Auxiliary and the verb in progressive. I have worked. Mm -hmm. I uh, I have worked late this mm -hmm. week. Correct. Uh, Tatiana said she had worked late. Mm -hmm. Exactly this week. Right? That's exactly the point. The only thing you're going to change is the auxiliary in this case, right? And the verb remains in participle. That's all. Very good. Thank you, Tatiana. Jorge, please read your sentence to Claudia. Claudia, change it to report the speech in past perfect, please. Um, I'm not sure about my, my <laughs> sentence, but my sister has buy a new laptop. What is the participle of buy? Both. Correct. Read it again, please. My sister has bought a new laptop. Correct. Jorge said, uh, her sister, his, <laughs> his sister uh, had bought a laptop, a new laptop. Correct. Exactly like that, right? You only change um the tense in this case the auxiliary have or has to have now what claudia mentioned was very important like we have to pay attention to the possessives right yes. for example if is the person that is talking is talking in first person when you report it you're gonna talk in third person referring to them right just be careful with that next we have um oh, claudia please read your sentence to manuel Manuel, you reported to past perfect. She has gone to the job since 2002. Okay. Mm, uh, 2002, okay. Uh, Cla Claudia said. Uh, Repeat, repeat the, the, the sentence, please. That's a tricky sentence, Claudia. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she has gone to the job since 2002. Okay. Claudia said, she has, uh, uh, she has gone to the job uh, 
since? Since 2002. Yes, pero en vez de has, had. Cuando uh, reportamos yes. es had. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Other than that, very good. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Okay, now we're going with present perfect continuous. Que es el que Tatiana nos mencionaba, right? In this case, you're going to have the auxiliary have or has in present, have or has, the verb to be in participle, siempre va a ser been, and the verb in progressive or continuous, ing. Therefore, por lo tanto, therefore, when you change it to direct speech, you're going to change only the auxiliary, have to have, right? This one is incorrect. Aquí tenían que haber pasado past perfect. She said they have been looking for an apartment for the last four months, all right? Okay, so let's make a sentence in present perfect continuous, please. Remember the combination for present perfect continuous, have or has been, verb in ing. We have been studying for one week. They have been resting two days, right? Subject, have or has been in verb in ing. If you have the ones that have finished, please raise your hand so we can start with you guys. All right. Um, Jorge, please read your sentence and Cristia, please switch it to past perfect continuous, please. They have been eating all day. You say they have been eating, eating all day. Uh, they, they, uh, he said, <laughs> she said, uh, they have been eating. Correct. All day. <laughs> yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. Please, uh, please read your sentence in present perfect continuous to Claudia, please. I have Claudia, been working. Okay. I have been working in the reports. Uh, Christia said she has, she had been working at the report. In the report, yes. She has, in the she has been working. <laughs> yes. Sorry, la auxiliar cambia a had. Very good. Thank you, Christia. Claudia, please read your sentence to Manuel, please. Manuel, change it to past perfect continuous, please. Okay. Maria has been studying for the test for the last two weeks. Sorry, Manuel. <laughs> Repeat, please. Maria, Maria yeah. has been studying for the test for the last two weeks. Eh, Claudia said, Maria has been studying for a test in the last five. <laughs> I don't remember. For the last for the, two weeks. Two week. For the last two weeks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, something that is very important, um, we were mentioning last week, remember, try to take notes. In this level that you guys are, which is intermediate, going to advance. The, your best friend when it comes to this type of exercises or listening exercises, your best friend is going to be pen and paper. <laughs> yes. 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 Also, I, I yes, yes. Also, um, if you are ever interested in working as interpreters, most of the companies that um, for interpreters, they do not let you take notes on the computer. The only thing they give you is a pen and a paper because at the end of the day, you have to delete everything or break everything down so yeah now um do we have one more volunteer for this one i want manuel to give his sentence i'm not sure chris no chris did the switch right all right manuel please read your sentence and tatiana is going to change it to past perfect continuous in reported speech 
Okay. <clears throat> What's your sentence, Manuel? <laughs> No lo había notado todavía, dicho. Ah, caray. <laughs> Hoy sí. Ok. I ate my breakfast at seven. O'clock. We're talking present perfect continuous, Manuel. Ah, ok. Yo no sé que había cambiado el pasito. A ver si ya la tenía. Ajá. Ok. <laughs> Pero le decía que no la tenía todavía porque pensé que había pasado ya. <laughs> no, no, yet. The, the teacher has been walking to the school. Manuel said the teacher have, have been working in the school. Walking to the school. Okay. Walking. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, very good. Thank you. That's all the search we have to do there. Thank you, Tatiana. Thank you, Manuel. All right. <laughs> And then we go exactly the same that we have been doing. We're going to go with past and all the, the forms of past. And then we will and we're going to, right? From past simple, if you have a sentence in past, you change it to past perfect, right? If you have it in past continuous, you change it to past perfect continuous, right? You're, all, you're always going to go one tense behind, basically. For will, you know it would. Right, would. the various uh, the version in past would be would, and for am, um, is are, you know the past tense is was or were, <laughs> so that's the mm -hmm. only switch you're going to be doing. Okay, for can, would be could, may and might it's exactly the same, would and would exactly the same, and should same story, right? So we're not gonna stay long in there because it's there is no point in those. Did you yes? scroll down, please? I need to. Which one? There? In, in past, simple past. Here. Past simple. Mm -hmm. Scroll down. Scroll down. We have it here. Yes. There? Yes. I, yes. Okay. Yes. Ahí está. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So here's what we're going to do right now. We have some exercises in the student's book. We're gonna go to the student's manual and we're gonna complete some sentences before we start with the practice here. Let me check. Here, on page 23 in the student's manual, you will find some questions, all right? What you're going to do is to rewrite each question in reported speech, right? So you can use the reference here. A customer ask is the way you're going to start reporting each of those sentences. Because we have six sentences, you can do two, all right? You don't have to do all six. We're gonna be working. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you five minutes, guys. Select two sentences and switch them to report in the speech. It can be anyone, the one or number six, number five or number three. You select, select two and switch them to report the speech. Okay, everyone, this is what we're doing right now. Select two of these sentences and you're going to change them to report the speech. I will give you five minutes for this, starting right now. These, these sentences. Oh, sorry. These, these six sentences change, uh, change, change one. Out of, no, two, Wendy. You have to select two, two and change them select to report as a speech. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you have five minutes. If you have doubts or questions, you can ask me. I'll be here.
Teacher, I have a question. Tell me. And the first one will be why a customer asked why was why was there a 2000 charge in his account? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like that. You already gave copy to everybody else, but yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no worries. We have one more minute, but if somebody has already finished this, the two sentences, raise your hand. We want to hear them, please. Okay, let's go with Jorge, please. I'm trying, teacher. Okay. <laughs> A customer asked me, why was there a 2000 charge in my account. Okay, why was there? A 2000 charge in my account. Okay. Now, when we're speaking, that's correct. But if you remember, there was a rule. Uh, a customer asked me why mm -hmm. there are there a two thousand charge. Why there in, was? <laughs> why there was? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So either or you can both both are good options, right? They are and they are correct. Okay, yes. <laughs> so you're, you're trying correctly. <laughs> What's the next one? Um, the next one is the bank representative asked me. When was my last charge change of my password? Mm. In that case, you're changing the deed for was. Can you remove it? Sorry? Can you remove the was and make it in past? Uh, the bank representative asked me. Mm -hmm. 
when my mm -hmm. my last change of my password. Mm -hmm. Sería when I when I last changed my password. Uh, when mm -hmm. I last mm -hmm. changed my password. Change. Mm -hmm. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Remember that when it's affirmative sentence or affirmative question, when you change it to um, to report the speech, you don't need to use the auxiliary. Okay. Entonces, prácticamente la dejamos en pasado simple la oración. When I last changed my password. Very good, Jorge. Thank you. Um, Tatiana, please. I did uh, the same uh, for Okay. Okay. So I didn't understand. I have to grow or, or I have to grow only he asked me when when what no when my last change this one would number four the bank representative asked me when I when I last changed change. my password mm -hmm. oh. changed in past right basically what the rule is telling me in, when I change it to report the speech in past, I remove the auxiliary did, right? I only put it in simple past. There and are the, many rules, teacher. Yeah, but this is just for WH questions, right? This is not for sentences, it's for WH questions and also for um, yes or no questions. And then we have, yes? I have a question. I have the same sentence, mm -hmm. uh, but I wrote uh, the bank representative asked when was he last changed his password. Mm, no, because the bank representative is talking to you. Okay. He's asking um, you, when did you, Christia, do it? Entonces, cuando se lo reporta, you have to change to me, right? The bank representative asked me when I last changed my password, right? Okay. Okay. Um, let's hear Manuel, please. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the, the sentence number three. Okay. The, <clears throat> the question, when will I receive fraud alerts? A customer has when he would receive fraud alert. Correct. When he would receive fraud alert. Yes. The and the number, next one? Number five. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, what information did they change in your bank account? The customer support agent asks what information they change in his bank account. Correct. The customer support agent asks what information they changed in your bank account. We just switch it to pass. Very good, Manuel, thank you. Let's hear Claudia, please. Mm -hmm. The first one is uh, that customer asks why was there a 2000 charge in his account? Correct. And the second, uh, and then another one is the number six. Mm -hmm. A customer asks when will the bank get in touch with him? Correct. <laughs> Very good. You switch the tense to would to pass and also the subject to the correct one. Very good, Claudia. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who participated. Okay, so here's what we're going to do right now. We're going to give me a minute. I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm, first of all, I'm going to pass attendance. So please be ready <laughs> for when you hear your names. Today is the 26th. We have Ana Raquel Villalta, Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you. Claudia Maria Melendez. Present. Thank you. Diana Elizabeth. Present. Thank you. Jorge Humberto. Present. Thank you. Jose Jonathan. Jose Rodrigo. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Rivas. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan de Dios. Juan de Dios Mejia. 
Linda Ibet Márquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Manuel Antonio. Present teacher. Thank you. María Concepción. Present. Thank you. María Elena. Present teacher. Thank you. Mario Ernesto Villeda. Present teacher. Thank you. Nelson Gabarreta. Present. Thank you. Norma Carolina. Present teacher. Thank you. Olga Marleni. Present teacher. Thank you. Silvia Suleima. Present. Present teacher. Thank you. Satiana Michelle. Present teacher. Thank you. Wendy Maribel. Present teacher. Thank you. And Christian Natalie. Present teacher. Thank you. Ooh, I love Mondays. Almost everybody comes to class. <laughs> nice. Okay. Here's what we're going to do right now. We have an activity. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to show it to you right now, guys. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to brainstorm. We're going to go to the breakout rooms, okay? We're going to play a game, but we're going to prepare for the game first. So in the groups, we're going to go to the breakout rooms. You're going to work in groups, and you're going to brainstorm a list of people who might ask them questions on what those questions and what the questions might be. For example, a police officer might ask you, where is your driver's license, right? So it can be anyone, their mother, father, teacher, anyone. So when we come back to the session, each group is going to say something, for example, but you don't have to say who it was. The other group has to guess. So for example, group number one will say, all right, group number two, this person asked us if, I, if we had our driver's license. ¿Quién hace esa pregunta normalmente? This person asks, asked us if we had our driver's license. Group number two, ah, police officer, okay. The police officer. Exactly, right? So one group will read a reported speech sentence of something that one random person could ask. And the other group will have to guess what type of person or what type of employee asked that type of questions, right? Or for example, you know, here in El Salvador, right? <laughs> um, this is like a very Salvadorian thing. For example, um, this person, oh, this person asked how many pupusas did I want? Usually that person is the person that makes pupusas, right? <laughs> Whoever sells pupusas is gonna ask you that question, right? So that's what you're going to do. In your groups, you're going to write sentences in reported speech that one specific type of employee would say or ask. And the other groups will have to guess, okay? Try to make at least five, three to five sentences, okay, per group. I'm, I'm gonna give you guys 10 minutes to write them so you can practice with each other, right? And think about those. It's gonna be three to four participants per group. So minimum three to five sentences, okay? The rooms are open right now. You can, well, it's nine o'clock, so you can start now and in 10 minutes we come back and we start playing. Three to five sentences. You can enter the rooms now. Maria Elena, you are the only one missing to go to the room. Yes, it's you. I entered. Okay. Juan de Dios and Mario Villeda are waiting for you, Maria. Okay. Hello. 
Hi, <laughs> I was passing to see if you needed help or if you understood what we're going to do. Uh, okay. We think we okay. have to create a phrase uh, of what other people say and the other has to guess. Exactly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Were you discussing the, the midterm exam? Yes, teacher. <laughs> Don't worry, you have until tomorrow. And if you haven't finished by tomorrow, we will resolve it at the end of the class tomorrow. So, porque tenemos dos días, llevamos dos días de atraso por los de 15 y 16. Entonces, realmente mañana martes termina, digamos, la unidad 2, el midterm exam. So we can solve sorry, it tomorrow together. Mm -hmm. Sorry, teacher. It's only that I write the, the sentences and always... <laughs> Give it me wrong, no matter how I I write. It. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, don't worry. My suggestion: just try to review it, but don't worry too much because we're gonna solve it in group in the class tomorrow. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I'll leave you now, girls. See you in a few minutes. Okay. Hello, pasaba a ver si. Ah, ok. Teacher, son tres o cinco oraciones. Tres, entre tres y cinco. Mínimo tres, máximo cinco. Ah, bueno. Uh -huh. Gracias. Ok, see you in a few minutes. como Hello? bueno se puede hacer como policía did you guys request my help yes it is what was the we question no have uh, all clear what we're gonna do in the okay end. what you're gonna do is you're going to write phrases and that other person would say and the other group has to guess what person would say those phrases, right? For example, right. Um, this person right. asked me, where was my driver's license? Who would ask exactly. that question? Mm -hmm. So you would do the same, right? For example, this person asked me, what symptoms do you have? Or what symptoms did I have? Because reported this picture, right? Uh, at the doctor asked you that, right? So you have to write three or five sentences. Y el otro okay, grupo lo va a adivinar, okay? Okay, great, thanks. Perfect. Claudia, what happened? No one is in my group. No, no one has an answer. You're supposed to be with Juan Carlos and Maria. Oh, they are listeners. Pero no entiendo por qué entraron a la sala entonces. <laughs> um, bueno, ya vamos a regresar realmente ahorita. Tres minutos les quedan, así que si quieres solo quedas acá, Claudia. Mm -hmm. Ok. Ok. Teacher, y la sección 2 ya está calificada. Y el mid, mid, mid term. We're finishing that one tomorrow because we lost the 15th and the 16th. Se corrió hasta martes, que sería mañana 27. Mañana terminamos la unidad 2. Entonces, el mid term está hasta para mañana. Pero igual lo vamos a resolver acá en la clase, juntos, para los que. Sí, yo tengo uh -huh. dos preguntas que no me. No. 
No me la van a poder hacer. Y usted tiene dos, hay gente que tiene todas las preguntas que no puede hacer. Así que le voy a resolver juntos en un grupo. Así que si no la ha terminado, no se preocupe, que todavía no lo voy a subir a su estado. Man, okay. el miércoles en la mañana mm -hmm. ok, thank you so we can solve it tomorrow, yeah Good night, teacher. Hi, Anna. <laughs> Don't worry. Right now we're I working. Just... <laughs> yeah, I saw. I saw. I passed attendance and you weren't here. I was. It was really weird because you never miss classes, Anna. So I was like, where is she? <laughs> But don't worry. I will change the attendance right now. So because <laughs> you're the first one in the list. <laughs> Right now, they are just finishing us, um, an activity. We will do it when they return. So just one more minute for them. Okay. Recorded. We're just going to give 10 more seconds for everybody to come back to the session. Okay. We're back. Let's go with room number one. Room number one, please read your sentences. And in this case, we're going to have Olga, what happened with your group? Sorry, teacher. What happened with your group, Olga? I only see you connected. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, room number one, we have Diana, Elizabeth, Norma, Carolina, and Tatiana. You're going to read your sentences to room number six. Claudia Melendez. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> to room number five, Cristia, Jorge, and Wendy. Okay. 
So, Cristia, Jorge, and Wendy, you are going to guess what room number one, what the phrases are and from who they are. Let's see. Room number one, please read them. Okay, uh, I'm going to start. This person asked me if my dog was vaccinated. Room number five. Yes. Okay. Uh, veterinary, that's correct. Next one, please. Room number one. And me, teacher. Uh, this person asked me if I was sick. Doctor. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I have another one. Uh, this person asked me if I did the homework. Teacher. teacher. Correct. <laughs> you got them all correct. Thank you, room number one. All right, room number five. You're going to read your sentences to room number three. Linda, Manuel, and Cynthia. Okay, room number five. You read your sentences to room number three. He okay. asked me, when is my next date? I don't know. My birthday. No. He asked me when is my next date. I don't know. Uh, my mother. <laughs> <laughs> <What? My> mother. <laughs> are you trying to say, Jorge, are you trying to say date or appointment? Uh, appointment. <laughs> uh, he asked me what is my next appointment. Igual hay bastante posibilidades. He asked me when is my next appointment. Uh-huh. Room number three. <laughs> I don't know. What was the answer, room number five? Huh? We said we said another another example. Okay. They already lost one. Room number three, you already lost one. Um <laughs> continue okay. room number five, please. This person suggests me to visit a pneumologist. A doctor. Yes. Good. And the next one. The next sentence, room number five. Wendy. It's the same. Okay. He asked ask me if I take my pill. <clears throat> I don't know. Uh, again, the doctor. Is that correct, Wendy? Uh, oh, my <laughs> Very good. <laughs> you got two my corrects. Group, oh, two oh, out of three. Love, love it, the doctor. Two out of three. <laughs> All right. Now, room number three, you're going to read your set. Uh, room number five, thank you so much. Room number three, you're going to read your sentences to room number four. Juan de Dios, María Elena, and Mario Villeda, please. Teacher, nosotros no entendimos. No hicimos solo las reports, please. Eh, mm. Ah, okay. Pero sí, tenemos por acá. Okay. Okay, okay. okay. Eh, this person asked me... Eh, where was the airport? Mm -hmm. Room number four? I don't know, a travel or maybe a taxi. Uh, so, so, it's similar. Cold, to a similar. Uh, yes, yes, it's valid. A taxi driver. Very good. Yes. <laughs> the next one, please. Uh, okay. Uh, my. Uh, 
my classmates. A uh, teacher said, where was the homework? This person said, but yeah, the respuesta. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. This person asked me if I have my driver license. Uh -huh. You can repeat, please. Okay. This person asked me. If I have my driver license, license or license, teacher? License. License, okay. Maybe uh, a policeman. A police. Yes. Oh, the police officer, yes. <laughs> that is correct. Thank you, room number three. All right, room number four. You're Thank going you, to read teacher. your sentences. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> room four, read your sentences to room number one, please. They are going to have to guess. They asked me, Norma if, they asked me he, they asked me if I need sugar with my coffee. The barista. <laughs> <Okay>. So so <laughs> a waiter. A waiter, correct. Uh -huh. The next one, please. He asked me where is my pink metal? It is my what? Paying. <laughs> Paying method. Huh? She asked me where. what is my paying method? Uh, the cashier. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the last one? She asked me where is my address? The taxi driver? The library guy. <laughs> the what? The delivery. The delivery guy. Oh. <laughs> Good, guys. You were very creative, all of you. Nice. Congratulations. You all did a great job. Thank you. All right. Here's the next activity. Be ready. Because this one is a little bit more tricky. Do you want to continue working in the same groups or do you want to switch? I'm gonna switch you all. Lo voy a cambiar de grupo a todos. Give me one more. Oh, todos quieren quedarse con los mismos grupos? Yes, I do. Okay. I do. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, so we're going to do. Each group has to write their advisors a letter. Their advisors es como decir Dr. Apollo, <laughs> right? But they say dear Dr. Apollo. Vamos a decir dear advisors, okay? So one person in the group will ask, will write a letter, right? Asking for advice on a problem. The second person in the group is gonna be the advisor, right? And they're gonna give the advice in the correct tense. And the third person is gonna tell. So van a ver dos usando reporters, speech y una cualquier tiempo para contestar. For example, student number one, dear advisor, my parents said we were moving to another country, but I don't want to move. The advisor person, number two, is going to give the advice. Oh, don't be afraid to tell your parents how you feel, right? Giving advice. And the third person is going to report in third person. The advisor told Pulanita not to be afraid to tell her, his or her parents how she or he felt. Capiche? Do we get it? No teacher. I'm Sorry, right, teacher. I don't understand. <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. We're going we're gonna again. We're going again. Each person, we have three persons per group, right? One person is going to be the advisor. One person is going to be the person asking for advice. And the third person is going to be someone reporting, okay? Person number one va a escribir una carta al advisor y va a decir, querido advisor, my parents said we were moving to another country, but I don't want to move. Este es un ejemplo. Va a usar reported speech. Alguien me dijo que no me miraba bonita hoy. Somebody told me I didn't look pretty today. That's student number one en el grupo, el primer estudiante. El segundo del grupo va a ser el advisor y le va a dar el consejo contestando la carta. 
Alguien me dijo allá que se veía fea. <laughs> okay, dear student, don't worry. Don't listen to that person. You are pretty. Un ejemplo, right? Y la tercera persona en el grupo va a contar la interacción en tercera persona. El advisor le dijo a la, a la persona, a la, a la miss. El advisor le dijo a la miss. The advisor told Miss Bickery not to be worried about what the other person said. She was pretty. That's all you have to do. Do we get it now? Yes. It's like a television show, right? <laughs> one person asks the advice, one person gives the advice, and another person reports in third person, right? Así que cuando regresemos a la sesión, cada grupo va a tener su, digamos, su episodio, right? Cada grupo recibimos esta carta y un estudiante va a leer lo que le está pidiendo de advice. Asegúrense que el, estu el estudiante que pide el consejo ocupe reported speech para narrar su problema. Alguien le dijo esto, alguien le pidió esto, alguien le puso a hacer esto. ¿Ok? Tiene que ser en report. El, el, el que va a dar el consejo lo puede hacer en presente. ¿Ok? Y la otra persona lo va a relatar en tercera persona. Ah, el advisor, el consejero le dijo al estudiante que hiciera esto. O que pensar eso. ¿Ok? En dos ocasiones se va a usar reported. El estudiante que pide consejo y el que lo narra. El que dé el consejo lo puede hacer en presente. No era problem. Ustedes lo deciden en las salas. ¿Ok? I'm going to give you 10 minutes for this. Si se fijan, no son, no son grandes historias, right? It's like an episode of watching, I don't know, Doctor Apollo, something like that. <laughs> so we're going to have 10 minutes. Cuando regresemos, vamos a revisar cómo van. Y si se ocupa más tiempo, pues obviamente se los damos, right? So the breakout rooms are open right now, and you're going to have 10 minutes. Ustedes discuten en los grupos y escogen quién va a ser quién. Okay? Go to the rooms right now, and you can start. Um, Ana, I'm going to assign you with room number two with Olga Marlene. And me, teacher. Okay, teacher. And Claudia also. Claudia, ya la voy a mover. Claudia, Claudia. Aquí está. You're also in room number two, Claudia. Hello, ¿quién más estaba con ustedes acá? Estaba Linda y Beth. Ah, oh, pero se ver qué se hizo. Sí. Linda. Se me desconectó. Linda. Um, entonces, no se preocupen, solo uno de ustedes va a usar reported speech, ¿ok? Ok. Solo uno de ustedes va a ser como que le mandó una okay. carta escrita. Fulanito me dijo tal cosa. Y el otro le contesta en tiempo normal, ¿verdad? Right? En el país. Okay. Exacto. Ajá. Okay. Traten de hacerlo que no sea tan cortito porque okay. solo son dos, tienen que compensar por una tercera persona. Right? Sí, sí. <laughs> sí, you know. It's okay. Thank Very you. Good. Hello, Mario, Maria Elena. Can you hear me, guys? Yes, it is. Here. Okay. Um, en este caso, como solo son ustedes dos, uno va a ser el estudiante pidiendo consejo, usando reported speech, contando alguna historia que le pasó y pidiendo el consejo. Por ejemplo, my father told me I was not intelligent, right? Entonces, la otra persona viene y le da el consejo, que es lo que debe decir, ¿ok? En este caso no va a haber una tercera persona porque solo hay dos en el grupo. No va a haber una tercera persona reportando en third person. Así que no se preocupen. Solo traten de hacerlo no tan cortito porque tienen que compensar para el, como si fueran tres. Así que traten de hacerlo un poquito medianito ahí. All right. See you in a few minutes.
All right. Now the word you in need more time. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you guys. If you were ready or if you're gonna need a few more minutes to complete we need this. A few more minutes. More minutes Perfect. I'm excited to see what you come up with. So I'm gonna give you five more minutes, okay? Let's go back to the rooms. They are open now. Okay. Yes, teacher. All right, let's go back. Do you have the invitation already? It's opened. 30 minutes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 30 minutes and go to bed. <laughs> Not in my class. <laughs> You can go back to the rooms, guys, and finish the task. Okay, did you? What is my invitation? No, le lo dejo pasar. Espera, lo voy a mover ahorita al cuatro, pero no acepta todavía. Yo lo voy a usar. Okay. Ahora sí, Manuel, ya en el tres.
All right, so we're coming back. And all right, we'll have everyone back in the session. Let's begin. We're going to start with room number one. We Let's hear the episode for room number one. Diana, Norma, Carolina, and Tatiana, please. Okay. okay. Dear advisor, my boss told me that I have to work overtime, but I have classes at night. Okay. The advice. Talk to your boss and explain your situation by showing him your university schedule. The advisor told me to talk to my boss and explain my situation by showing to him my university schedule. Very good. You're number one. You delivered. <laughs> that is exactly what we were supposed to do. Nice. You did a great job, ladies. Reported the speech and also yes. present tense. Very well, yes. Thank you. It Congratulations, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> I know it was hard, but that's the point, guys. The more you advance, the harder it gets. <laughs> but you guys are you guys are doing it. So really good job. Thank you. Let's go with room number two. We have the episode for Anna Raquel, Claudia Melendez, and Olga Marleni. Okay. Dear advisor, I broke up with my boyfriend the last week. What can I do because I miss him? Do you need block it immediately? Be focused in other activities. Okay, okay. Claudia said that she broke up with her boyfriend last week. And Olga suggested that she needed to block him and she recommended that Claudia focus on other activities. Oh my God, <laughs> it was really good. <laughs> si se fijan, cada grupo le puso su toque personal a cómo desarrolló el ejercicio, pero todos cumplieron con el requisito. So very good job, ladies. Room number two, very well done. He needs well to done. find another, another boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no le di buen consejo, pero bueno. <laughs> Thank you, room number two. <laughs> room number two, very well done. Congratulations. Let's go with room number three. In this room, there were only two people, Manuel and Silvia. So we, we let's see how they did it. Manuel, Silvia, please. Okay. Manuel, my boss told me where, where the report that I request to you at the morning. I worry because I don't finish because the computer so that's not working. Please give me one advice. How can I do? Uh, listen to Leymar. In that case, you could call your boss and explain him what is the problem with your laptop. And then he may give you more time to present the report. That's all, teacher. All right, you guys did not use reported speech that much, but you delivered a good, <laughs> a good exercise. So as long as we comply, we're good. It was very fluent also. So thank you, Manuel and Silvia. Very good job. Thank you. We're going with room number four right now. We have Juan de Dios, Maria Elena, and no, Juan de Dios, well, no, there, sorry. It's only Maria Elena and Mario Villeda, please. Also two people only. So let's see how they do it. Maria Elena, Mario? Very Maria Elena. Oh, yes. Hi, Mario. Um, need your help. My boss asked me for the report at the end of the month, but I don't have enough time for finish. Don't worry. Somebody says it's better to do a value work than a lot. <laughs> also very concise yeah, and that's point. Right. <laughs> yeah right but my boss doesn't understand that doesn't understand that doesn't understand that uh, I suggest talk with him I'm telling somebody can help you well I will talk to him okay thank you very well, good. Thank you. Room number five, room number four. I know it's difficult when only two people. So very good. Thank you. Same as Manuel and Silvia. 
you deliver. Very good job. And we're going with room number five. Three people, Christia, Jorge, and Wendy. Let's hear them, please. Okay. Hello, Jorge. My boss said me I will start my job turn early for improve some issues, and I don't want that. Don't worry about that, Christia. It's better to you to resolve your issues because you will, you will have more time. Okay. Jorge said to Christia, it's better to resolve her issues. Very good. That's exactly the way it was. <laughs> well done. Reported, present, reported. Very good. Room number four. Room number five it is. <laughs> Very good job. Thank you. Concise to the point and delivering. Nice. Okay. The last activity we have for tonight. In the same breakout rooms, you're going to share experiences with one another, right? About either you were in a previous department or you were in a previous job. For example, imagine that I am in the breakout room with, um, let's say Diana, okay? So I'm going to tell Diana. Diana, one time when I was in, when I was working in Sykes, my boss told me to do overtime on a Sunday. My boss told me to do overtime on a Sunday. And I asked him if it was legal to do that. <laughs> and he said, Yes, it is legal as long as you don't tell you don't tell anyone that you were here. So what Diana is going to tell when we come to this room, when we come to the main session, Diana is going to tell, ah, Miss Bigri told me that when she worked in Sykes, her boss asked her to stay, to do overtime on a Sunday. And she asked him if it was legal, and he said that it was legal as long as she didn't tell anyone. Okay? Diana is going to say everything that I tell her to you guys in third person. So that's what you're gonna be doing right now, okay? For this section, we're going to switch a little bit the breakout rooms. We're gonna be in rooms or two people ideally, okay? So you can enter the rooms, you're gonna have, you're gonna have six minutes for this. Tienen que ser una historia cortita. Si se fijaron, lo mío fue tres oraciones que reportaría en total. Su jefe le dijo esto, ella le dijo esto, él le contestó esto. Right? It has to be a short story from the past that you're going to report. Las salas están abiertas, tienen seis minutos. Pueden ingresar. No me sale, teacher. Give me a minute. Ahora. Oh, Ahora.
meeting is being recorded. All right. We only have like four minutes, four to five minutes more of class. So we're going to be, you're going to go straight to the point, right? <laughs> Let's go with room number one. Please. We have Maria Ceron, oh no, Norma Carolina and Tatiana Michelle, please. Teacher, we didn't finish. So, mm, yeah. It doesn't matter. You, whatever you have, as long as you got it. Okay. Uh, Norma, if you want, you can share with the. Teacher, um, uh, my boss asked me if I only had half an hour to lunch. I need that. Mm, I said la historia de quien? Ah, work, work at. Mm. All right. Uh, teacher, uh, mm -hmm. we, yeah. well, in this case, it can be my story, for example, because we wrote, mm -hmm. my boss asked me yeah. if I could take only 30 minutes for lunch. Mm -hmm. Because we have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. All but right. we didn't finish. We only have that. <laughs> that is, the, that is the, the problem. I'm going to look the other way. Voy a obviar esto por esta vez. <laughs> so don't worry. Room number two, let's see what you have. Igual, si no han terminado, hasta donde, hasta donde pudieran llegar. Veamos, Cristia, Jorge y Wendy. Okay. Okay. I, I share my experience and I told to my classmates that when I was working, when I was working in the airport, we suppose, uh, um, I get COVID and my boss told me, told me if I can connect to my house and if work, I could. If, it, if I could to, to, to connect in my house, uh, it doesn't matter that I get COVID and for me is for me is bad experience and it's not illegal it's, it's illegal it was illegal definitely <laughs> yeah thank you Christia Let's, yes Christia said her boss mm -hmm. asked her boss asked her for connect in her house for work mm -hmm. despite she was with COVID mm -hmm. and her boss said that was legal. Uh, right. But Grecia uh, thinks that's not legal. <laughs> Very good, thank you. No tengo un factor importante. Jorge, la última versión, la última parte que menciona, Grecia thinks that's not legal. Esa parte no la reportó en pasado. Because it's not necessary. That's her opinion, right? It's impressive. So very good job, Christian Jorge. You delivered. Nice. Thank you. Okay. We're going to stop here. We will repeat this exercise tomorrow with different partners. And al principio de la clase, para que todos puedan participar. Y se aseguren de que estén haciendo la transición de los verbos. Si hay sujetos que cambiar, que se aseguren de cambiarlos también. Esa parte es bien importante. Lo que les digo, vuelvo y repito, en una entrevista de trabajo, si una persona no hace uno de esos cambios al online reported speech, automáticamente el que le está entrevistando lo va a descalificar. Y no es algo que no sepan, es algo que quizás no se ha practicado suficiente. Así que vamos a hacer esto una vez más mañana, diferentes partners y con más tiempo para que todos puedan repasar, ¿ok? También si no han terminado el midterm exam, eh, por los dos días que faltamos la semana antepasada, se corre hasta mañana martes, la unidad 2 termina mañana martes, así que si no han terminado el examen, el midterm, no se preocupen, en la clase lo vamos a desarrollar también entre todos, ¿ok? Voy a pasar lista, please be ready. We have Ana Raquel Vialta. Present. Thank you. Carlos Antonio Escobar. Present. Thank you. Claudia María Meléndez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Diana Elizabeth. Here, teacher. Thank you. Jorge Humberto Vela. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Jonathan Vigil. Jose Rodrigo Hernandez. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Carlos Rivas. Juan de Dios Mejía. Present teacher. Thank Perdón. you. <laughs> no worries. Linda Ibet. 
Manuel Antonio Palma. Present teacher. Thank you, María Concepción. Present. Thank you, María Elena. Present teacher. Thank you, Mario Ernesto. Present teacher. Thank you, Nelson Gabarreta. Norma Carolina Villeda. Present teacher. Thank you, Olga Marleni. Present. Thank you, Silvia Suleima. Present. Thank you, Tatiana Michel. Present teacher. Thank you, um, Wendy Maribel. Sí. Thank you, Christian Natalie. Sí, teacher. Antes de irnos, ¿hay alguno de ustedes que no ha tenido sus 10 minutos de asesoría? ¿Hay alguien que está pendiente de su asesoría? Ok, si no falta nadie, entonces have a good night, everyone. Teacher. See you tomorrow. Yes? Nice, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hasta good night, everyone. Tenemos que, que tener ya, yeah, teacher. Para mañana, Wendy. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Era una uh -huh. falta, no tiene minutos. María, Cerón. Sí. Ok, entonces quédese ahorita, María. Vamos a repasar. Solo que se desconecten los demás. Ok. Ok. Cuénteme, María. ¿Qué desea reposar? Tenemos 10 minutos, usted me dice. Estamos sin nada. Ah, caray. No, no, sí le he entendido parte de todo, ¿verdad? Pero ah. es que yo tengo un problema que me cuesta un poco de dinero. Ok. Um, eh. Como vimos, vaya, le, voy a, le voy a poner lo que estamos viendo ahora. Primero. Porque, por ejemplo, ahorita sí he estado como por lo del trabajo muy tarde. Uh -huh. Conectándome por ratos. Sí, yo comprendo, no se preocupe. Se lo voy a mostrar ahorita. Con esta tabla estábamos repasando al inicio de la clase. Eh, ya ahorita, como solo somos los obreros, se lo voy a explicar en español, María, un poco más okay. fácil también. Eh, les comento. Reported speech, casi siempre lo, lo que hacemos es contar en, en un tiempo pasado o en un tiempo anterior al que, en el que la persona habla. Por ejemplo, si la persona habla en presente, yo lo voy a reportar en pasado, porque ya sucedió, ya pasó, ¿verdad? Entonces, si usted me dice, por ejemplo, está este cartel que está acá. Este cartel dice, I can't find the words, so I will invent new words. Él está hablando en presente, dice, no puedo hallar las palabras, así que inventaré nuevas. En presente. Entonces, si viene alguien y me pregunta a mí, Vicky, ¿qué dijo él? What did he say? Uh, entonces, yo voy a usar reported speech. Se usa para contar lo que otra persona nos dijo, María. ¿Ok? Entonces vengo yo y voy a decir, ah, él dijo, siempre voy a empezar en pasado, he said, y el pas lo que hago, lo que le decía, dependiendo en qué tiempo esté la oración original, yo le voy a reportar en un tiempo anterior. Entonces, ah, él dijo, el pasado de can't, María, sería could. Entonces, como dice, he, I can't, he said, he couldn't find the words, en vez de will, would, el pasado. So, he would invent new ones. ¿Ok? okay. Lo que hago es convertirla a un tiempo anterior, básicamente. Cuando yo le estoy contando, cuando yo le estoy narrando lo que otra persona dijo. ¿Ok? Entonces, ¿qué va a pasar con los demás tiempos gramaticales? Es lo que estábamos viendo acá. Me decía, por ejemplo, en la tabla. Si la oración original está en presente, yo la reporto en pasado. Por ejemplo, Lea estas dos, María. She does laundry on Saturday. Uh -huh. She say she did her laundry on Saturday. Uh -huh. ¿Qué es lo que cambió en la que dice direct speech, María? Uh, ¿Qué cambió en ambas? No, la primera, en la primera no cambia nada porque está, es la original, digamos. Okay. Y esta es donde se reporta, ¿qué es lo que cambió? El uh, das... Pasó a ser side. Did. Eh, ah, did, perdón. Uh -huh. Y um, está más corto. Ajá, solamente eso, realmente. Eh, aquí la oración dice, ella lava su ropa el sábado. 
cuando yo reporto voy a empezar, como voy a narrar, yo digo, ella dijo que ella lavaba su ropa el sábado. ¿Ok? Uh -huh. El reported speech es eso, narrar que otra persona dijo y convertir lo que dijo en otro tiempo. Uh -huh. Ante, idealmente la anterior. Por ejemplo, aquí, mire, presente continuo. Cuando yo, la, si la persona original habla en continuo, presente, cuando yo lo narre, cuando yo lo reporte, María, lo voy a contar en el pasado, que sería past continuous. O sea, side siempre se tiene que usar. Ajá. He said, she said, para reportar, sí, es como, como el anuncio. Usted anuncia que otra persona dijo eso. O sea, ah. Ella dijo o ella contó. A veces va a ver que está, ocupan otro verbo. Puede decir, she told me, she told me that, o he told me that. Bueno, ¿no? Cualquiera, o oh, he mentioned that, she said, o así. Pues ah. eso puede cambiar, pero siempre va a haber un verbo que anuncia lo que la persona dijo anteriormente. ¿Ok? Ah. Okay. Y acá tenemos esto, estos tres son como los más comunes, ¿ok? El otro, si está en presente, perfecto. Si la oración original está en presente, perfecto, María. Que presente, perfecto, no es más que o la auxiliar had o has y un verbo en participio. Yo la reporto, mire, siempre la primera han pasado. Ella dijo, él dijo. Y de ahí, el, lo único que cambia es que el has o have va a pasar a had. Y el otro siempre en participio. Esa es la única diferencia. Entonces, si quiere, hagamos una con presente. De presente a pasado. Yo le voy a dar una oración. Usted deme una oración en presente. Cualquiera. Um, ¿Cualquiera? Uh -huh. Cualquier oración en presente. Um, sería como... She has uh, a sleep in the moment. Mm. Pero, ¿qué, ¿qué quiere decir ahí, María? Ella tiene sueño en este momento. Ah, entonces sería she is sleepy. She, she, is, is, sleepy. Sleepy. Ah, she is sleepy. Digámoslo así. Solo en eso. She is sleepy. Usted me está diciendo en presente, ¿verdad? Okay. Y, usted, y usted me está diciendo she. Me está contando. María me está contando de otra persona. ¿Ok? Uh -huh. Sí, voy a reportarlo así. Yo voy a decirle, digamos que me pregunta, fulanito. Vicky, ¿qué dijo María? Entonces yo voy a decir, María said that she was asleep. ¿Ok? El is lo pasé a was. Solo eso cambia. ¿Ok? Yeah. María said, o puedo decirle, she said that she was asleep. O puedo decir, María said that she was asleep. ¿Ok? Ok. Entonces yo le voy a hacer una oración en presente y ahora usted la cambia a pasado, María. ¿Ok? Y okay. la mi oración va a ser, I love pizza. I love pizza. I love pizza. Entonces, ya. She said. Eh, mm -hmm. she, she said. She. She said she was love pizza. Sí, el was. El pasado yeah. de love. Uh -huh. uh, love. It. Uh -huh. She said she loved pizza. Repeat. Mm -hmm. She said she loved pizza. Correct. Ah, pues, el was solo lo vamos a usar si en presente vimos que había un am, is, o are. Si está el verbo tuviera en alguna de sus tres formas en presente, en pasado yo lo voy a cambiar a was o where. Eso es lo único, María. Ok. Ok. So that's gonna be it for tonight. Mañana vamos a resolver el examen entre todos en la clase, así que trate de avanzar hasta donde pueda y las que no, las que no alcance, las la resolvemos mañana en la clase de acuerdo. Ok, teacher. Así que pase buenas noches. La veo mañana, María. Cuídese. Gracias. Buenas noches. Bye. Thank you. Gracias.